Insperity presents the Small Business Advocate Show with Jim Blassingame, brought to you by FedEx, CareerBuilder.com, and Palo Alto Software. This is a copyrighted production of Small Business Network, Inc., all rights reserved. I really meant I was sorry For ever causing you pain You showed your appreciation By walking out anyway a little Stevie Ray bringing us back. 17 till. I'm Jim Blassingame. Never get tired of the late, great Stevie Ray. Still miss him after all these years. 17 till. I'm Jim Blassingame. Please check out our website, smallbusinessadvocate.com. Having a great visit with our great friend, Marie, Grace Marie Turner. Grace Marie is an original founding member of our Brain Trust. She's the president of the Galen Institute. She's the author the, the author and, and co-author, I should say, of Why Obamacare is Wrong for America. Grace Marie, thanks again for hanging out with us. Folks, nobody knows more about public policy, healthcare public policy, than Grace Marie. And Grace Marie, I want you to. Here, this is this will probably be your your last time on the show until the election. And I would like, as small business owners are sitting there trying to decide, sorting out what the, what are they going to do, making sure they know what they want to do. I would like for you to explain to them what Obamacare, what's going to be in their lives coming going forward, say for the next two years or so if Obamacare is the law of the land? Well, let's look first at what um, other companies are saying about what this is going to mean for their businesses. Not just, you know, I've written, as you know, why Obamacare is wrong for America. So my policy analysis of this law is that it is going to be very damaging for our health sector and our economy and our future prosperity. But what we already see happening, Jim, is Small businesses are saying, I can't grow. I can't, I can't hire more than 50 people. Because if I do, I am subject to the crushing fines for, and mandates of this law. If you have 51 employees, 50 employees plus one, mm-hmm. then you are you're subject to the fines of Obamacare. So it's, it's, it's over 50, not 50 or over. It, I'm sorry, it is 50 or over. Yeah, it's okay, 50 so, 40, over. so up to, you, you can go up to, 40, up to 49. You can go up to 49 if you want to hit 50. For, n- for now, Grace Marie, for, for now. For now, exactly. And the paperwork even complied because you're going to have to report to the federal government, you know, what size your business is because they're going to need to make sure you're not, that you don't have to comply with this law. But if you do, if you are a small business with 50 or more employees, you're going to find that, the, that in many cases the fines that you have to pay for not providing health insurance Mm -hmm. can basically take your whole profit margin. I've talked with some restaurant owners who own several franchise restaurants, and they say that basically just paying the fines for not providing health insurance, which can be either two or three thousand dollars, depending upon some of the complexities of the law, uh, per worker, per year, basically they say, that's my whole profit margin. Why should I even open my door? Mm -hmm. And for those employers who do provide health insurance, many, many responsible employers do, your costs are going to go through the roof. And what was the main thing? Why were their, their costs go up? Because there are, so, there, there are now 18 new taxes in Obamacare. Many of those are going to be uh, added on to drugs, medical devices, the cost of health insurance, in addition to all the mandates health insurance plans are going to have to provide this long, long list of services and benefits, and it's going to be very difficult for for small business owners to find health insurance outside of these exchanges and networks that are compliant with the new federal law. And third, even if businesses can find a way to escape it, individuals are still Mm -hmm. subject to the, the mandates that they provide and that they carry health insurance that meets federal stipulations. The Congressional Budget Office has estimated that the average cost of a policy that is compliant with Obamacare, when it's fully implemented by 2016, mm-hmm. will be $20,000 a year for a family of mm. four. Mm. We cannot and, afford and, that. And no cost. small business can afford that for each employee. They and so therefore, they'll stop. They'll, it'll be cheaper for them to stop, to stop, um, uh, to just to pay the fine. Which, which, which. Here's the thing, Grace Marie. When 
if 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 the same regime is regimes are in place, when it's determined that people are paying the finest to cover their folks, and people are starting to drop out of 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 the of the of, the, of the, not have coverage, they'll raise the fines just like well, they'll, and, and, just like they'll lower. You know, there's all there's been all kinds of pressure, folks. Other bills, other laws that have a 50 employee uh, f- a ceiling on it or a basement on it, I should say, a floor. There's been all kind of pressure over the years to lower that to 25. There'll be all kinds of pressure to lower that number for Obamacare to 25. Absolutely. In and in Massachusetts, where you know there already is an employer and individual mandate in yeah. place, um, they the fines eventually equal the cost of the health insurance. Yeah. So you just might as well provide so, insurance because the fine's the same amount. And but so, I, I mean, I just the Congress would have to pass that. But that's the real risk. If well, let, let's throw out in place. before we run out of time on this segment. I also want to point out, Grace Marie, that this is going to affect the lives of the employees because if you those franchises or franchisees you were talking about who have multiple franchise or organizations, um, they will probably cut their full time employees back to less than twenty eight hours to make them part time so they don't have to comply with that. That is happening already all over the country. And that's not good for those families. It is It is the worst. This law is the most harmful to the most vulnerable Americans. Yeah. Bob Samuelson from the Washington Post had a column about this this on Sunday or, or this week talking about how this hurts people who are at the lower end of the economic scale, who have 40-hour-a-week jobs, so even minimum wage, that even if you're up to $15 an hour, the, com- the company uh, closed, taking off five of your hours. Right. Let's say you're, right. making, you're working 35 hours a week, right. which is a typical part-time employee. They'll so cut you back to 30 or 25. You could lose $150 oh, a week. A lot of stuff. Hold on to that thought, Grace. We've got to take a quick break. The president says you can keep your policy if you want to. When we come back, we're going to find out if that's true. Insperity presents the Small Business Advocate Show with Jim Blassingame, brought to you by FedEx, CareerBuilder.com, and Palo Alto Software. This is a copyrighted production of Small Business Network, Inc., intended for the private use of our audience. Except as otherwise provided by copyright law, all other copying, redistribution, or publication without prior written consent is prohibited. All rights reserved.